So, uh, Dr. Polydefkis, uh, at Hopkins, how often um, are the orthopedic surgeons actually sampling a little bit of uh, retinaculum with Congo red staining? So it's something that historically uh, wasn't done too much, but increasingly it's a topic of discussion. So some orthopedic surgeons are now doing that, uh, but not all. Uh, but I think, you know, building on what Jim was saying was this is a very variable disease. So it's difficult to come up with a prototypic case. Some patients can have prominent dysautonomia, prominent uh, heart manifestations, prominent neuropathy, or all of the above. So it's, it's very variable, and that can make it a challenge at the early stages. Um, and what, is, what are uh, the two, your two favorite um, signals of uh, familial polyneuropathy? So uh, I think a family history is really helpful. And you have to dig a little bit deep sometimes. So it's not always just a family history of neuropathy, but uh, you also want to ask about cardiac disease, unexplained death, cardiac death, arrhythmias. Uh, sometimes people develop neuropathic symptoms, and it's not labeled as peripheral neuropathy. It might get mislabeled as motor neuron disease or a mysterious wasting disease. So I think uh, de you know, delving into the family history can be helpful. And then, uh, as Jim alluded to, carpal tunnel syndrome, and not just unilateral, but bilateral, presenting in a person 50 or 60 years old is, is a big uh, red flag or clue. Okay, Akshay, um, you're involved in um, clinical trials with cardiomyopathy. You have a lot of experience in hereditary cardiomyopathies. We've talked um, very briefly about issues of penetrance that people um, who are anticipated to have clinical disease because they're genotypically positive for a, a particular disease do not always express it. Um, could you give us some perspective uh, from your um, cardiomyopathy expertise on whether family histories are reliable in distinguishing familial versus um, uh, sporadic disease? Well, I think for the reasons that Michael outlined, I think family history is, uh, although we can acknowledge it's important, is always a little bit uh, uh, challenging. Uh, not all patients recollect uh, the details of family history, and I think one has to be alert, as was outlined, to uh, some of the things that would raise suspicion for cardiac disease, for example, segregating in the family. So. Uh, unexplained death, I think, is a nice uh, um, flag uh, uh, because sometimes those deaths are sudden and might have been ascribed to cardiac disease in a time where um, there may not have been deliberate diagnostic efforts made. I think uh, there are also uh, sometimes a history of device utilization because conduction disease might be a manifestation of this problem in the heart. Uh, I think would be helpful. So if somebody needed a pacemaker uh, in middle age or uh, um, uh, had uh, arrhythmias in middle age, that would be something to at least consider. Um, I think that the challenge with uh, this disorder is that there is variable penetrance and not every carrier is therefore affected over a lifetime. We have some data from large community cohorts uh, where populations at heightened risk, for example, African-American patients carrying this amyloidogenic variant, B122I, have been followed. Uh, um, over time, and that population, which represents maybe 3 to 4 percent of the total population of patients in the cohort of African Americans in the ERIC study, uh, uh, the patients who carry the mutation were certainly at heightened risk for development of uh, some cardiac manifestations, and particularly heart failure later in life, um, and uh, much more so than the non-carriers. And so it's clear that there is something uh, um, uh, concerning about carrying the mutation. 
But the actual clinical penetrance um, of the cardiac phenotype, even in patients at high risk for development of that, is not complete um, and may be less than 50% by the age of uh, 70 or 80. So it's a little bit hard to know exactly who in front of you carrying a variant is going to develop cardiac manifestations. The family history is a clue, but not always obtainable, um, and I think we have, uh, not always obtainable in detail, and then I think we have to kind of be mindful that just carrying the gene doesn't necessarily uh, imply that you'll go on to develop the problem.